Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of an aircraft and for that we're going to use a public 3D model of a Cessna aircraft. We'll be running CFD or Computational Fluid Dynamics simulations and we'll be using Airshaper to do so. Let me show you how that's done. So you simply drag and drop the file into Airshaper and then the file will be uploaded and converted and compressed so you can easily view it in your browser. Once the file is converted, you'll just see your 3D file in the browser and you can set up the simulation. So the first thing you need to do is to choose whether it's on the ground or above the ground. You can actually do takeoff and landing simulations, which will show you the ground effect underneath the wing. Let's put it above the ground in this case. You can choose whether it's static or moving. This one is moving, which means uh, relative to the ground, there's a velocity vector. You can select the velocity. Let's go for, let's say, 100 miles per hour and you must specify the units. In this case, let's add a scale factor because the wingspan is around 10, 11 meters for this aircraft. Optionally, you can also select a propeller. So in this case, we have added a propeller um, to the aircraft. Um, the cone is composed of the components. We just select the different elements and then the software will automatically detect the central axis of rotation. We simply need to specify the RPM, let's do 2000, and then we hit the finished button and that's the only thing you need to do to set up the simulation. On the next page, we can select an accuracy. If you're comparing just very, very simple basic aircraft uh, without propellers because they're not supported at basic resolution, you can do so. It's just one million cells, but you can easily compare uh, a delta wing versus a normal aircraft versus any other shape. If you start to use more detailed uh, models and you want more resolution, then the regular simulation with 10 million cells is what you would need. It comes with the full PDF report. Uh, you can add the rotating elements like propellers. You can even add radiators. So this is what is used for the bulk of design work. And if you really want those last details, then the advanced simulation will get you up to 50 to 100 million cells um, with a lot more functionality and details captured there. So that's how you set up a simulation at Airshaper. Once everything is done and it runs in the Google Cloud uh, high performance computing instances, so it's done within let's say two to three hours for a normal aircraft simulation, then you get all the visual results in Airshaper which help you understand what the flow is like and how you can actually improve your design. So let's have a look at that as well. So on the online results page there's a number of things that you can see. First of all, we can see what the pressure clouds look like. Now, this is an arbitrary term. In technical terms, this is an isosurface for the total pressure coefficient of zero. This means that it's a 3D representation of areas in which you're losing a lot of energy. Um, like generating a wake is usually closely linked to losing energy. For example, you can analyze how the landing gear is generating a lot of wake. Uh, the opening of the landing gear, you can see that the wheels, even though they're shrouded uh, by the scowling, they still generate quite a lot of drag. There's external geometries sticking out. So whether this is an exhaust pipe or, or a pitot tube or anything that is sticking out on the aircraft, it can actually cause drag. If you then move to the side of the aircraft here, we have again the landing gear, um, even the support parts uh, for people to step on, they generate extra drag. Wherever a support element reaches the fuselage, this is a critical area because two boundary layers will meet and this is more sensitive to flow separation and this causes drag as well. Even the hinges on the doors are, are generating drag. So every small single detail that is sticking out uh, or causing uh, an edge to form is actually um, possibly a cause of drag. If you look at the back of the aircraft here, we can see that there are two small antennas here. Um, and because they're actually located at the top of the aircraft, uh, at the top of the wing in, on the suction side, this is where the airflow already has to put in a lot of effort to stay attached to the surface. If you then disturb something, this will really trip the flow and it's very difficult for the flow to reattach to the surface. So that's also very critical. Uh, just try not to disturb the airflow at the top or at the suction side of a wing. You can also see that there's energy being lost inside the wingtip vortex here. We'll get to that later as well. The propeller itself is uh, a study of its own. You can see that there's a, a very low pressure at the suction side of the blades and high pressure at the other side, which you can see on the surface pressure map as well. So you can see the side of the blade which is pushing airway has a high pressure and the side at the opposite side which is dragging air along has a, a, a suction effect and the net result is that the propeller pulls itself forward. Another effect is that the propeller generates um, a high 
velocity stream of air in its wake which will hit the cowling of the engine compartment here it will also hit the front windshield and it will hit the wing and so on and that also causes an asymmetric flow pattern um, to, to arise on the surface of the aircraft because there's a swirl being added by the propeller, sorry, in this direction, which will actually provide an asymmetric pressure distribution on the surface. Then you can see that as the air needs to curve around uh, certain uh, curve parts like the uh, radius here of the windscreen, this actually creates a low pressure area. And that's normal because of the Bernoulli effect. You can also see this on the cowlings on the uh, landing gear. So there's a high pressure buildup here, which is the stagnation area, but then the air needs to curve around and accelerate. Again, you can see that we have a very nice blue area here, which is the suction side of the wing. That's very interesting to see. Uh, so it's performing well, even though this is a generic public 3D model. But you can already see, because of the finite wingspan, that the lift performance is dropping off towards the wingtips here. So you can see that this is dark blue, but this dark blue area is actually reducing as you get closer to the wingtip. Because of the high pressure air from the bottom, taking a shortcut via the sides to the top here, creating a vortex, but also reducing the suction effect here at the top and the pressure at the bottom. So providing a plane with wingtips, for example, can be a good solution to increase uh, the wing loading and possibly also the lift over drag ratio. So if we continue then with our analysis, as, uh, analysis and we move to surface friction, you'll see that um, there's of course high surface friction across the fuselage because this high speed air coming off the propeller is generating uh, a lot of friction on the surface. Um, the front cowling is also caught into the action there. Um, we can see that the middle part of the wing um, is also subject to higher surface friction levels and so on. We can also use the surface friction as an indication as to where you have flow separation uh, because surface friction can either be a stagnation point or it can be an area in which the flow has detached and is no longer sliding across the surface and this indicates low surface friction which indicates then a separate airflow uh, as you can see in the wake of the landing gear cowlings for example as well. Also some wake and flow separation here just uh, around these control surfaces. Then you can see that there are vertical streamlines that you can use which you can drag left right to understand how the airflow actually accelerates um, across the suction side of the wing. Um, you can also see the wingtip vortex there really originating at the wingtips. You can do the same with the horizontal streamlines. Uh, really interesting to see as you move them up and down how the airflow actually curls if you look at these wingtips, how it actually curls around the uh, wing and then uh, gets pulled inward because of this downward pull of the main air flow um, at the middle of the aircraft, then the airflow at the side actually tries to fill that void uh, behind the aircraft. There's a rough indication of wind noise. These are steady state RANS simulations uh, using a K Omega SST turbulence model. So this is not a full acoustic simulation. Nevertheless, using an acoustic analogy, it is possible to predict the biggest sources of wind noise. And very typically, these would be located around the landing gear. For example, of course, the propeller as well, and also those parts causing flow separation. Then, if you specify a propeller, you can actually analyze the propeller by clicking on it. So, if you plot the streamlines which are going through the disc comprising the propeller, let's say, they can actually see that they speed up as they move through the propeller disc here. You can analyze the values, so there's an indication of the torque, the power and the thrust. But you can also work with the coefficients. So typically, typically people talk about the thrust coefficient, power coefficient, and the energy, uh, sorry, the efficiency um, performance, which are related to the advance ratio as well. So these can be analyzed in detail. And if you want, um, models get split into separate components automatically, which means that you can just click on the components and then you'll be able to analyze the force on each individual element. This is the online visualization data. If you want, you can also download the raw simulation data and make your own post-processing using a software called Paraview. It's an open source viewer for scientific data and there's an instruction video on how to do so. And there's also a PDF report which you download. If you download it, we'll show you more details. Let's have a look. So in the report, you'll get a summary of all of the settings which were applied during the simulation. Um, we calculate the 
frontal surface area, but also the plan firm area, which is later on used to calculate the drag coefficient. Then the meshed model is actually shown. So this is not the original 3D model. This is actually the CFD mesh on the surface. And you'll see it's quite detailed. And one of the reasons for this is that every simulation at Airshaper um, uses what is called adaptive mesh refinement, which means that the mesh is initially created and refined closer to the object. But as the first simulation converges, um, the algorithm will automatically look at areas within the flow where you have a high gradient of pressure and a high vorticity, typically in the wake, around the wings and so on, and refine the mesh and then continue the simulation with a more refined mesh. Then you'll get to see tables which document the drag force, the lift force, the lateral force, especially if you do a yaw maneuver, for example. There are the pitch, roll and yaw moments. Um, you can even do uh, dynamic stability derivative calculations on Airshaper. Uh, the drag coefficient, uh, which is of course subject to the definition of your plan form area, you can always change that if you like. And then there are a number of visualizations which match what you have seen online. So that was it for the aerodynamic analysis of a generic aircraft, the Cessna in this case. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.